the person of war. And then take a look at this lineup back here. The Steve number Drew leads that group. A motocross racer, a guy with tons of dirt skill, been adapting very well to Supermoto. Teammates with Kerry Hart now. And Kurt Nicole follows him, and Kurt has been having a ton of trouble with the dirt section. The rhythm section, very tough for many riders here. We talked about it. It's 288 feet long. There's multiple ways through it. Some of the riders decided, hey, you got to get over more obstacles to be fast, and that started taking people out right away. And starting with Drew there in the front on 73, that is, what, a, maybe a nine-place battle for fifth. Definitely one rider to point out that was in that mix. And speaking of Kerry Hart, there you see him on the number 46 machine on the back of his pants, Mr. Pink. Married to Pink, Married now to the Pink. rock star, that happened in Costa Rica. And so that's the rider I wanted to point out there, the 22 and then the two. Two riders who medaled last year, the silver for Jeremy McGrath, the bronze for Chad Reed. They were highly in the mix, but right now, they're a little ways back, but starting to make a move. Back up at the front, Mark Burkhardt back into the stadium for the second time. And remember, at lap 18, they must make a stop, 18, 19, or 20. One of those three laps, that's something none of them are particularly accustomed to. Definitely not, and anything can happen. And right there, the number eight, Kurt Nicole, he is offline, and we're trying to get a number on the other motorcycle. That is one of the Troy Lee design team bikes. It could be Cassidy Anderson on the number 15, and it is. Yep. And Anderson is a great story. He has been sweeping all of the lights class events, now riding the big bike for only the fifth day. Number 199 in 15th place. He's already told you, well, he got him scored now as 17. He's already told you that he doesn't do that well in this particular discipline, he has a lot of trouble on the pavement. He got a terrible start, and it's all about him trying to catch up now. Let's go back and see what happened earlier. All right, we're looking at these riders coming out of the rhythm section. Cassidy Anderson tripling out. Oh, oh, check that out. Kurt Nicole actually coming, it looks like doubling from the outside to the end and just crash tackles. Check this out, going triple. Oh, so it was Anderson jumping up to the underneath of Nicole. You know whose fault is it? Two riders, two different sections. If I was Cassidy, I wouldn't want to get Kurt upset at me. He looks like he's pretty tough when you check him out. But unfortunately for both riders, going down big, and that will be a problem. And I think that will continue, Paul, to be a story here today. Well, let's talk about that, the whole fitness thing. I mean, this is a long distance, uh, over 35 miles, about 37 miles with all of these different obstacles. I mean, motocross, supercross, that's tough, but this strains you in other ways. It definitely does. The mental, too, you gotta really look at. Plus, when you're stepping out, you can see him bringing the back tire out. Yeah, nice style there. Fillmore bringing up the fourth place position, but the mental edge is very important, especially when you're going down that pit straight at about 100 miles an hour, diving into that right turn. Very scary to stand next to the course and watch these riders hit that section. Here around the fountain, everybody's really driving to the inside. Now, right out of this right turn will be where the pits will open up. And that is really gonna shake things up. Anything can happen. We saw all kinds of times in the pit stop practices, guys having problems getting their chain on, all kinds of different things happening. And, and there's Jeremy McGrath. You see his number two. He's lined up behind Reed and Drew. So McGrath also one of those that didn't come off the line all that good and now has to work his way through the field. He's currently seventh. So Reed was able to get by Steve Reed. You saw they both had different techniques where they got over that little stutter bump there. This is what they say is the most slippery part of the track here. They get into this concrete surface. It's polished concrete. There's a very tight chicane. And then guess what? Oh, I just got to jump into the stadium. Look at this. This is what they do best. And look at Jeremy. Jeremy comes up side by side and around with Drew. And he looked like he went to set him up too. He went to go past him in the section, in the rhythm section. Knew he didn't have, so he backed up and tried to dive to the inside. Wasn't able to make it happen, but in the meantime, they're letting Chad Reed get away. And Chad Reed, the bronze medalist last year, 
who is having a particularly great day and now that he's in the open he can really ride. Well, let's see if McGrath they say there's not a ton of passing lanes here on the asphalt. Let's see if McGrath can do a setup. Look he's going outside looking possibly to dive to the inside but there's just no room. Steve Drew was fourth in the 2004 event so we know he's a player here. One of the things that you will find in this particular event is because the mixture of disciplines as we look at the Navy Sky Tracks, you'll see names and numbers that you're not really accustomed to seeing in that position. Like who would figure that McGrath would be sitting back in seventh right now? But it's a long run and there are a lot of changes yet to come. Most of the riders I talked to said that all they, although they will be racing hard and tough in the early stages of the race, they're going to be biding their time just a little bit. They say the real race isn't going to start until after the pit stops have shaken it down. Back up to the front. Mark Burkhart, Doug Henry, 1-2, teammates. Jeff Ward sits in third, but they have spread out. And as Cam suggests, the uh, tactics, the strategy, as it were, on how you ride at this distance and whether or not you just mark place until you can get to the stop and then really go for it or whether or not you're required to ride early. McGrath continues his battle and gets around Drew. I expected him to get through that section and get by Drew. Now the question is, can he put time and catch up to Chad Reed? Remember, last year, Jeremy McGrath was able to jump past Chad Reed for the silver medal. And look at this, making the movie, gets the inside line, tries to compress to keep him from getting as much air time as Drew, but he actually goes higher, but steals the inside line. So McGrath taking the line away from Drew. You know, in McGrath's mind, that's just the computer. It ticks away, it sees so many situations from so many different times. And he says, all right, I know I have to be here now. I'm gonna do this. Back to the front once again. As we look for Burkhart and Henry, there's Burkhart. And when they drive it into the corner and you see the back tire stepping out, they call that backing it in. So that's a technique used here in supermoto and in street bike racing. And the supermoto guys are amazing the way they control the motorcycle. Remember, they're riding on the dirt with no knobby. Very slick out there, and they're able to get through these obstacles. Oh, and Ward almost looking like he was going to come just a little short, and he is our oldest competitor in the field today. Well, and you saw the interval from the leader, Burkhardt, back to the second place, Doug Henry, and then Jeff Ward. Take a look at the, at the variance in lines that you're seeing here. Now, in Jeff Ward, I mean, he's raced everything from the Indy 500, motocross, supercross, and he approaches just a little bit different. See how he sweeps in compared to Henry? I do like that, and also Jeff Ward, eight-time AMA champion. He's earned one in the supermoto ranks, so seven in motocross and supercross. And Chad Reed is, is not all that far back there based on the fact we're gonna have pit stops and anything can happen, just a little slip up, and remember, they're going to be changing rear tires, but not front tires. So if you're driving too hard on that front tire, you could burn up the sides of that tire. Well, and keep an eye on that, uh, the timings at the top of the screen, because Chad Reed is closing on Fillmore. And as he closes on Fillmore, it seems that he is gapping a bit on Jeremy McGrath. But now that McGrath is by Drew, we'll see if he can make something happen here. We're going to check some lap times here in just a second. And if you're saying, where is Travis Pastrana? Well, he is back in 15th place. And has an incredible amount of distance. This does not look like a gold opportunity for him. Maybe not even a medal day, but then again, we said that yesterday in the rally car. And in the last few seconds of the event, he took the gold. So all things are possible. go back and find Pastrana for you. Yes, he is well back there. Let's take a look at a moment. See if, if he is riding well or if he's got issues with the machine. Well, it looks like the bike. Oh, and he does oh, have an issue it. now. 
sliding out. So Travis pushing, trying to make up time. That's a very slow section of the course, a very slow get off for Pastrana. He has remounted, trying to take a look. It doesn't look like anything's been up on the bars or anything. So maybe just a slide out for Travis. Let's take a look at it and see if we can see anything in particular. There is another look at Travis Pastrana. He had his problems coming into the corner, laid it out, got back on the bike and got going, but this has not been the greatest of days. It looked like maybe he caught a little bit of that painted surface there, started to slide on the paint because that's a little bit more slippery than the asphalt. So it's Burkhardt, Henry, and Ward. One, two, three. And Reed continues to carve his way up the field. X Games 12 will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Forget. And Supermoto getting closer and closer to that pit stop. They're the leaders for you. Burkhardt, Henry Ward, one, two, three, just like it has been right from the start. And in fact, speaking of the start, Big crash right there. Definitely wasn't. Chad Reed did not get a good jump out of the gate, but one guy who did, the 199 coming from the outside. You see everybody else on the brakes, though. Travis thinking he could dive in there a little bit harder, and guess what? There's no knobbies on that bike. Those slicks slid right around. Travis is down, and that is a problem. You can see from on board. Oh, and multiple riders 